Hi, this is Russ from Protos Expert, and we get a lot of questions, especially now AAX is about, asking what all the different plugin formats are about, what works with which version of Pro Tools, what doesn't work, and lots of other questions. So we had a chat about it, and I've decided to make a video. I'm trying to make a video here of explaining all about Pro Tools plugins in a way that my mum would understand. Now, my mum is a smart cookie. She must be. She had me, but at the same time, she doesn't really use Pro Tools. So I wanted to do this in a simpler way as possible so that how, wherever, wherever you, you're coming from, whether you're an experienced Pro Tools user or just starting, I want to give you the entire guide in as best way as possible. Now, a plugin uh, works in, in order to give you uh, effects and processing of your audio. So it's a software equivalent to a piece of hardware like a compressor or a reverb unit or an EQ unit. And they work within the digital environment within Pro Tools. Depending on which Pro Tools version you have, in terms of which uh, version in number version, so it could be 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, or 11, or it could be a basic Pro Tools or an empowered version or a HD native or a HD or a HDX system, you'll have different variants. That's why it gets confusing. So we're going to try and go through this as slowly as possible but in a way that by the end of it, you should understand what goes on. So a little bit about the two ways that Pro Tools can process audio with plugins. The first way is real time, which means that uh, as the audio is going through, it's actually processing it uh, at, on the fly. Uh, and those would be inserts. And if you look at any channel, this is the edit window at the moment. If I go to the mix window, and bring that op over here for a minute, just open that a bit wider so we can see it. There we go. So see these insert points? They are where we host our plugins. And I've got three kinds of channels open. I've got a audio channel, an instrument channel, and an auxiliary channel because they will handle things slightly differently as well. So an audio channel is normally the way your audio would be recorded in on your timeline. So I've got a bit of audio here. I've got a drum kit just playing a loop. And there it is in the mix window. So if I want to, if I want to add a, a plug-in real-time on that and process that real-time, I can just come to an insert point and depending on which version of Pro Tools, you'll have two options then. If you're using a HD or a HDX version of Pro, uh, for Pro Tools, you'll see DSP plugins and you'll see native plugins. If you're in a non-HD version, then you'll just see them in native. So this won't give you dual lists. It would just give you either, DS, either, either just give you native. But on a HD or HDX system, this is a HDX1 system, it's giving me the DSP equivalent. And often the, there is a DSP and a native version of the same plugin. So let's go to a native. So for example, let's say I wanted to come to this drum kit uh, and put some compression on it. So I'll go for the 6030 Ultimate Compressor from Mac DSP. So now that's working in real time and I can play that. Here, that's now smacking that audio. Now, for one, two, then I could add a second one in. I could add a reverb in or something, for example. So I'll go to uh, reverb, I'll go to air reverb. So that's real time processing. Now I can turn them on and off, press the command key or the, on my keyboard and turn them on and off and bypass them. So it's doing nothing to the audio file. The audio file stays intact. Second version is this. We can mark the audio and we can go to this audio suite window. And that will be the same in any version of uh, Pro Tools. And then we can again come in, come to the reverb, like D-verb, for example. And we can listen to that. Take that into dry mode for a moment. When we've got what we want, we render that, and now the audio is 
has got the effect on it. That's called audio suite. That's non-real-time processing. There it is again with that. So there we go. So we've got real-time and audio suite. That's the easy bit. Now let's talk about different formats. Now in Pro Tools uh, 10 and below, your formats were RTAS, Real-Time Audio Suite, which was a 32-bit uh, plugin, and uh, an Audio Suite. So those were the two in a native system. In a HD system, you had RTAS and Audio Suite and TDM. So those were the three different ones, and the TDM was the HD version. Then when Pro Tools 11 came about, Avid redesigned the entire audio system within Pro Tools. And along came the Avid Audio Engine, which is a 64-bit engine, and now uses AAX plugins. Now, AAX plugins are for Pro Tools 10, if you've got 32-bit versions, and Pro Tools 11, if you've got 64-bit versions. So if you use Pro Tools 10 and below, then you your plugins that you need to buy are either, if you're using a native system, or Pro Tools Vanilla as some people call it, they will be RTAS plugins. And they will have the extension .dpm. And then you will have audio suites as well in that format. Then also, in Pro, as when Pro Tools 10 came along, which was the kind of bridging version of Pro Tools before Pro Tools 11, along came AAX 32-bit. So an AX 32-bit plugin will run in Pro Tools 10, but it will not run in Pro Tools 11. 64-bit versions are what you need for Pro Tools 11, either real-time plugins, uh, which are now called AX Native. So the equivalent to RTAS now is AX Native 64-bit, and the equivalent to TDM now is AX 64-bit DSP. So I hope you're still with me. I'm trying to be as clear as possible. So let's just try and recap so far. Pro Tools 10 and down, RTAS for native systems, and TDM for HD systems. Pro Tools 11 and up, AAX DSP for HD, and AAX native for non-HD systems, and they are 64-bit. Now, one little bit of confusion that's happened is people have started calling the 64-bit versions of AX AX2. There is no AX2 plugin architecture. It's all AX. What was probably slightly unhelpful is during the transition period, we had 32-bit versions of AX that came along, and lots of us thought that they would then work in Pro Tools 11. They don't. You need 64-bit versions. Now, let's talk about a few other things as well while we are talking about this. Now, what's very helpful as well is if you use Rewire, then you can open things like Reason and any Rewire-based door. So you could use Reason to host Reason plugins and use Reason software and uh, the Reason uh, uh, rack extensions. If you have a copy of Reaper, then you can open Reaper and Rewire that in, and you can run VSTs and audio units which are not compatible with Pro Tools. And via Rewire, you can run them within Pro Tools, which is very cool. And there's also wrappers, so there's the wrapper, the uh, VST to Artas wrapper that's been around for years, made by F Expansion. And also, if you use Vienna Ensemble Pro 5, you can then host audio units if you're using a Mac within Pro Tools. And if you're using a PC, you can host VST plugins within Pro Tools 11. In fact, any version, but Pro Tools 11 as well. For a little while, Sugarbytes created a wrapper which would wrap plugins so they would run in Pro Tools 10 in AX format. Uh, that didn't last very long. Avid weren't very happy about that and squashed that. So you might have seen that talked about. It doesn't exist at the moment and it doesn't look like it will ever exist at any time soon because nobody is authorized to write any kind of wrapper that will host VSTs or any other format in an AX shell within Pro Tools. So there we go. So one last recap, Pro Tools 11, AX 64-bit, DSP for HD systems, and 64-bit native for non-HD systems and HDX systems. Pro Tools 10 and down, you have TDM for HD systems, and RTAS or RTAS, depending on what part of the world you live in, for non-HD systems. 
I hope that's all been clear. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.